Hey, I'm Matt with Meat Church. Today we're smoking a whole beef tenderloin and we're going to finish it with cowboy butter. Well, it's right in time for the holiday season. Uh, this is my absolute favorite thing to make. A lot of debate about what you're going to make during the holiday season. A lot of people think prime rib is the ultimate. I've been on record saying that because I do love it. Um, I will tell you through my years of cooking outside, I don't think as many females love a prime rib as they do a whole beef tenderloin. This eats more like a steak. Um, you know, it's filet mignon when cut up into smaller portions and cooked as a steak. So you can't go wrong with this. Um, it can be an expensive cut. Luckily, during the holidays, they often go on sale. So hopefully that's the case um, at your local butcher. But, you know, some people are intimidated by cooking this or a prime rib because they are incredibly expensive at times. And people, you know, don't want to spend that amount of money. But it's very, very simple to cook. So don't sweat that. Um, I'm going to show you a foolproof way. And we're going to finish it with a twist this year with cowboy butter. We've done this in the past. Uh, really straightforward cook, but I'm going to add two different things this year that I think that you guys will love. And by the way, if you're doing a holiday ham, if you're doing a prime rib, if you're doing a turkey, we put the holiday playlist up. We have you covered on all that. We've got like four different ways to do prime rib. Um, plenty of options for you guys if this isn't what you're doing. All right, so let's dig in. What I've got here, thanks to my friends at 44 Farms down in Cameron, Texas, is a never ever which means no hormones, no antibiotics, whole beef tenderloin. It's a beautiful piece of meat. Out of the package, it may not look so beautiful, but we'll get it there, and it's actually really easy. The first part, we're gonna start it with your hands. You don't even need a knife in the beginning. So this is called the chain, and yes, you can remove this mostly with your hands, as I'm doing. I've done no pre-work to this. This came straight out of the package, up from Cameron. I just use my hands to kind of separate, and you'll get to a portion here where you need to use your knife but remove the chain. A lot of the chain is unusable, but some of it is good to be ground up. Sharp boning knife is your friend. And I'm just gonna separate that. Some of that is good, a lot of it is not, but we're gonna hang on to it. Put it over here in a little pan. All right, what else do we need to do? Well, now you need to get off any of this excess fat. And same thing, a lot of this you can actually pull off by hand that you don't actually have to trim, especially on the top here. And then you're gonna remove uh, silver skin. And we're basically just gonna trim this thing up uh, to our liking. Well, this one doesn't wanna be pulled by hand, so we're gonna use our knife. I did one of these earlier this month with my buddy Joe Zavala for his barbecue distribution box. And uh, if you guys are members of that club, you see that we did a whole bunch of this by hand. There we go. There's some of the hand stuff I pull off. And then we'll trim it. So you got choices when you get into the trim here. Um, you know, I grew up very poor. I would want to maximize every single bit of this. So I would cook it all. Uh, if you guys come from a competition background or watch competition cooks, they'll trim their stuff to be extremely even so that it cooks very evenly. Uh, and I will trim this down to kind of remove a piece of this uh, because it will cook more evenly, but I will use anything I trim off. But you certainly uh, don't, have to, um, you don't have to trim anything off if you don't want to. I always find that there's people in a big family gathering that will be glad to eat the stuff that's cooked uh, to a little higher internal temperature than everything else. So this comes from experience, but it's not hard to do at all. Uh, by the way, if you like fillets, this is, would be the cheapest way to make um, fillets also. All right, so we got kind of the head and the tail here. And yeah, it does kind of look like a gigantic beef tenderloin. Clean up a little more here, there we go. So once you got it all stripped away, you can take your knife and remove this completely and just kind of leave it in this cylinder type shape. That would cook the most even. I am going to leave this big portion on today and butcher twine it together. If you want to leave this tail, I would recommend folding it in here and tying that together as well and cooking it like that. Like I said, I am gonna cut the very tip of it off. Uh, when I cooked with Joe, funny enough, um, I actually ended up putting this in chili the next week, which seems like expensive chili, but it was really good. And I'm just gonna remove some of the silver skin. Be the most boring part of the video. And after I do that, uh, we're gonna slather it up. I'm gonna slather with something unique today, which I think is super tasty. Um, 
and then uh, we're going to season it, tie it up, and we'll put it on the smoker. So I'm just going to take my boning knife, reach right underneath this, and just kind of angle it up a little bit. Of course, for video, never wants to cooperate. I like to remove the silver skin for a couple reasons. Uh, primarily so that my uh, whatever I'm using as a binder and my seasoning can really penetrate the meat. You're not going to penetrate this silver skin otherwise and also isn't a real pleasant bite if you leave it. This will be the hardest thing you have to do today but it's really not that big a deal. That's looking pretty good. I'm super happy with that. There we go. So it's pretty uniform, obviously a little bit thicker here. That's okay. The rest of this is, is fairly uniform. Uh, so let's jump into slathering up and seasoning it. Prime rib video that I did last year, I slathered with W sauce. So this is my friend Bear Holman's Worcestershire sauce. This is just pro tip on taste. If you know, you know. I don't get paid five cents by these guys. This is just a delicious product. Um, I slathered a prime rib in it and it was awesome. Um, I like this stuff straight out of the bottle. So I thought it would be really good on here. Um, if you don't have this and it's too close to Christmas, don't sweat it. Um, you could just use olive oil. Um, you don't have to use a binder at all if you don't want to. I also love using the English mustard, so kind of like a Wellington, but use whatever you want. It's a way for the seasoning to adhere to the meat and stay adhered during the cook. Then we don't need too much. This stuff is delicious, amazing in Bloody Marys. I absolutely love it on chicken wings, by the way. Get my one clean hand here. Ooh, a little heavy. Here, we're gonna use what's on the board. It's the fun of cooking outside. Don't be afraid to get messy with it. Your wife can't get mad that you messed up your kitchen. All right, now we're gonna season it. I'm going with uh, my favorite beef combination, which is our OG holy cow and our gourmet garlic and herb. Uh, guaranteed winner, the holidays. It's great on steak, great on prime rib, certainly great on tenderloin. Uh, we've done this, I love it. Same thing I did with Joe. Can't get enough of it. So our holy cow is a, is a salt, pepper, garlic mix. This is primarily what I'm going with today. Before I flip it over, I'm gonna put a little bit of our garlic and herb. Italian blend seasoning just complements beef really well. Let's see. And then after I do this, I'm gonna take some butcher twine and I'm gonna truss it all together uh, just to help it stay uniform during the cook. It'll allow it to cook more evenly and keep shape a little bit. I'm going barehanded touching the bottles just because I want the engagement from the glove police down in the comments below. Speaking of, if you guys haven't watched our meme tweets, now would be a great time. Hit the meat tweets playlist. It's where we address the haters. Haters don't bother me 1%. I love it. I actually love their negative engagement. Fuels the ad revenue. So keep it coming. But go watch those. They're a lot of fun, especially at the holidays. I'm going to go the cheater method. I've just taken butcher twine here and I've cut off six or seven pieces or so. Uh, you, you can do the method where you wrap around tie it tight and I could go down and loop this down, but let's just keep it simple for you at home. I'm going to lay six pieces of this out. I'm going to tie it really tight. I'm going to snip off the excess and then we're going to move to cooking. It's all tied up. Um, I'm gonna go over here and get my fire ready to roll. We're gonna give this seasoning at least 15 minutes to adhere. Um, I recommend doing this the night before. It's not gonna hurt it to let this sit in your fridge overnight and be prepared so the next day you can hop up and just get to cooking. But I'm gonna get my fire going. We'll see y'all back here in just a minute. Seasoning is adhered over there on that tenderloin, so let's talk about cooking. Today I'm cooking on my mill scale 94 gallon offset with post oak. Now, you can cook this on whatever you want. You can put this in your oven if you want. You can do it on a pellet grill. They all work. And there's a lot of variation with temperatures as well. Um, I just kind of want subtle smoke. 
I'm going 275 degrees today. You could go lower if you want it smokier. You could go hotter, 325, 350, whatever you want. Lower you go, the more smoky it's going to get. So I'm kicking, I'm picking my kind of middle of the road, kind of high end, I guess I would say, on the smoking uh, spectrum, which is 275. And it's going to take about an hour at that point to do the first step, which is going to be, we're taking it to 115 degrees internal. I'm shooting for medium rare on this tenderloin ultimately. When we hit 115, I'm going to pull it off and I'm going to sear it a couple minutes aside on a raging hot charcoal grill over here. So I'm going to grab the tenderloin and throw it in the smoker. And I'm going to place the bigger end towards the fire because it could take the heat. You could also turn it kind of sideways if you like, but I like this because this the bigger end will catch the direct heat, smaller end away from the fire. Using my instrument thermometer, I will check it along the way, but from experience, that size is gonna take me about one hour, so I'll see y'all then. All right, it's been about an hour and five minutes. We've been checking this along the way, right in the thickest part. Right at 115, so we're gonna pull it off, put it over on the butcher block to rest for about 10 minutes. I'll meet you over there. All right, we've let this rest for 10 minutes. Why do we do that? This was a reverse sear where you smoke it first, you sear it hard at the end. Um, you, you allow the meat to rest so the juices will redistribute throughout the meat. Now we can put that hard sear on it and we won't have to wait at the end. We're just gonna sear it and we get to slice and eat. Normally, I serve this with our horseradish cream. That's what we did in the video last year. That um, recipe is on the website. It's also in this uh, recipe on the website, but today we're gonna do something a little bit different. Um, I'm gonna serve this with my cowboy butter. And this is also going to be down in the description. I've already made it. I actually made it this past weekend for the Cowboys game when they destroyed the Eagles. So the butter tasted amazing. But this was basically two sticks of unsalted butter that I just softened. Uh, and then I put a bunch of really good stuff in it like Dijon mustard, some holy cow, a bunch of herbs in it, formed it into a log, put it in the fridge. Uh, and then I served it over steaks at my tailgate. Uh, but that would be really good dipping sauce for this. So I thought, why not do it for this and teach y'all something new? So check that recipe out. So I'm going to take uh, some of that here and I'm going to melt it over on my yakitori. So I've just got a really hot charcoal grill set up here. Um, you can sear this on a charcoal grill. You can sear it in a cast iron skillet on your stove, whatever you want to sear with. But this is blazing hot. I've got an insulated glove on, but if my hand were off this, I wouldn't be able to hold it there for more than two or three seconds. It's, it's super duper hot. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to drop this down one level real quick. Favorite thing about the Yakitori, you can adjust the grates. All right, here we go. Hear that sizzle. I'm gonna give it about two minutes a side and I'm gonna consider this four sides. I'm gonna sear the bottom, the top, and I'm gonna roll it up on the edge and kind of get those sides as well because I want that caramelization around the entire thing. Um, you could have just smoked this to, to your desired internal temperature. Medium rare is 130 to 135. Um, if that's what I want to do, I would have smoked it over there to about 127 or so, let it carry over cook into low 130s. But I prefer the taste of having that char from the Mallory reaction that happens uh, right here um, over this hot fire. And I think that crush just tastes better. So searing this a couple minutes aside is going to get us in the 120s and make sure, I don't want to overcook this. I like it to be under, uh, if anything. And like I said in the beginning, your pieces down here on the end will be more well done. So People like my wife, Mrs. Meat Church, likes it medium. Well, then they can eat the ends, and I can eat the biggest part uh, in the middle. Beautiful color we've got on that. Should have said this earlier. Normally I cut the strings off before I throw it back on. I'm not on my A game today. Uh, it doesn't matter if you cut them before you sear or not. I normally do cut them before because oftentimes the fire will just pop them. I got lucky in this case and it didn't. So it did help it maintain its shape. But I'm gonna let this uh, sit for just a second, just to cool off. Uh, I'm gonna grab something to drink and we'll see how we did. All right, it's time to dig in and see how we did. Holiday theme, we're going red everything, including the red Montana knife. All right, I'm gonna go, I cut the strings off, by the way, uh, while this was resting. I'm gonna go right here on that mark, a little money shot, whoo. 
Hashtag nailed it. I'll cut a couple slices off here. Well, that is, honestly, I can tell you right now, that's how I love it. And so let's, oh, let's hold this up here and show you. That's crazy tender. I can already tell. So outside, you're going to see the gray. That's from the hard sear that we just put on there. So going back to what I said earlier, if you just straight smoke it through, you're not going to get that. You'd have more of what I would call a coast to coast, medium rare. But with the reverse sear method, the benefit I've said for years and years and years, I think it's the most superior way to cook a steak, is it gives you your desired doneness medium rare all the way to the edge, except for where you seared it. And I seared that hard. If I didn't do two minutes per side, um, it wouldn't have that much gray in the middle. Uh, traditional methods of cooking steaks where you're going to have more targeted uh, desired doneness right in the middle. So, I mean, look at that. I mean, it's juicy as all get out. So I'm going to cut it in half here. So take a little bite. I mean, I don't even need teeth to eat that. You just pull it apart. 44 Farms beef is amazing, but all right, what do we get right off the bat? Well, subtle smokiness, which is delicious. I think it's like perfect for a holiday meal. Uh, my wife isn't gonna be like, that's too smoky, but the crust on the outside, the holy cow garlic and herb, I told you it's my favorite combination. I can subtly taste the binder of the W sauce. It's not overpowering. I mean, that is just like an amazing flavor. But let's go in here to this melted cowboy butter. Look at all that. How do you think that's gonna be? I ain't mad at it. Damn, that's good. That's a winner. I think this beats prime rib, in my opinion. Just my two cents. You can't go wrong either way. Uh, so pick what you like. Um, I'll be doing some prime rib stuff next week, I'm sure. I can't ever get enough of that, but this is where it's at. Uh, and my family loves this. So this is what's gonna be on our table uh, on Christmas day for sure. But no matter what you do, again, you can hit our holiday playlist. We've got all the big meats. Do a beef Wellington. We did one of those videos last year. That's, you know, some people think it's intimidating, but super fun to cook and uh, mighty impressive. You slap a Wellington down, um, on the table in front of your family and they're going to be blown away by it. Use some of these same techniques and then add a little puff pastry on the end. So check out that video, uh, but make sure you like and subscribe. That's how we did these free weekly videos for you guys on without any paid advertisements for anybody. This is just out of our passion for cooking and trying to encourage you to get outside and to cook. Thanks for sticking with us. See y'all next week.